Have you seen the new firmware out for the Anytone 878 Plus series? Well, today I'm going to show you six steps for updating the firmware from your previous version to 1.14, which is the latest version, and it's starting right now. Hey guys, this is Jason, KC5HWB. If this is your first time to join us here, please click on subscribe below. Click on the bell notification icon so that you can keep up with all the videos that we post on this show. Everything that's new in amateur radio. So, last week I put up a video showing how to update the firmware to 1.14 on the Anytone 878 Plus. And it was fine. Uh, it was... Uh, you see my green screen there, right? Okay. <laughs> So um, at the end of the, and I had some really good feedback on it, and a couple of you came along and said, well, you forgot to do the, uh, the, the baseband reboot. I didn't forget to do the baseband reboot. I simply didn't do it because I had done it prior to loading that version of firmware. Full disclosure, I had a beta version because people send me beta stuff because they know I have a YouTube channel. I've got two or three, yeah, two or three guys who send me beta stuff for any tone, TYT, and whatever. And sometimes I'll test out stuff before, but they'll be like, don't put this up until it is approved. It's in production. Fine. No problem. No problem with that at all. So I've been running a beta version of 1.14 on my Anytone D878 Plus radio for about a month. So when the production version came out, I showed you how to update it. And the main reason I did that was because I wanted to show you what the screen looked like. Because that was some of the major changes was the screen. Well... Correctly so, some of you commented, well, you forgot the, ba the baseband update. Again, I didn't forget it, I just, that wasn't part of the video. But, good point. Thank you for those comments. I do enjoy constructive criticism on the show. I probably should have thought about that, but I, I would have had to go back and downgrade from 1.14 beta to a previous version and then do that whole thing over again. And I'm not sure how that, since you got to do the baseband update, I'm not sure how all that wor would work. I didn't want to brick my radio. So anyway, the cool thing about the 878 firmware is that it works on the 878 Plus and also on the 878, the regular 878, the non-plus. <laughs> That's what I was about to say, the non-plus radio. So I want to show you six steps to update the firmware on this radio. We're going to go through this, and it's going to include the baseband update. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is read your code plug from the radio. Okay, now, it's a good idea to go ahead and read the code plug so that you can have a latest copy of it. However, having said that, you should always have a backup of your code plug. Your live code plug should never be in your radio. Your live code plug should be sitting on your hard drive on your computer somewhere. I have mine backed up to a cloud drive. Every time I make a change to a code plug, I put today's date on it. So if I make a change today, I'll put today's date on it. I made a change last week. It has last week's date, whatever day that was on it, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got a list of code plugs this long, long on my hard drive, which backs up to my Google Drive, so I can access it from any computer, from my phone, or whatever. All right, so your living, breathing, up-to-date, most up-to-date code plug that's on your radio shouldn't only be on your radio. It should only be, it should also be on your hard drive. So uh, bear that in mind. Um, for when you're doing any type of update at all. That way, if you screw something up, you can always go back and find a previous version of the code plug. So, if uh, I just read this radio, and you see it doesn't have much of a code plug in it now. So now I'm going to take, let's go over here to this camera. And you see this is running, uh, turn it on the side here so there's no glare on the screen. This, this radio is actually running menu, settings, vice info, firmware version 1.09. So it is, uh, there's some glare on the screen from that light over there, that's fine. Firmware version 1.09. So what we're going to do is once again power off the radio, like I showed you last time. Uh, let me zoom this out a touch. Okay. All right, now I'm going to hold down the PTT and the blue button and power it on. 
and you've got the flashing LED now. And then I'm going to go back over here to the CPS, and I'm going to go to Tool and Firmware on Icon Update. We open up the Firmware Update window. And this is going to be the same file I used last time on the other radio. You'll see that the firmware version doesn't actually have a plus in it because it's the same firmware on the UV, on the D878UV and the D878UV plus. I'm going to go open, file open successed, which again is wrong. <laughs> I mentioned that in the last video. And I'm going to go right. Now that's going to take a few minutes to complete. I'm going to bring you over here and show you this. We're going to, uh, so reading the code plug was step one. Step two was to uh, power the radio on in uh, MCU mode. Step three was to open, go to tool, firmware and icon update, open the file, go find the file, and click on write. And there we go. We're going to wait for that. Let's see what the screen looks like here. The screen's kind of black right now. Not really seeing any activity on the screen at all right now. But again, this is slow flashing, just like it did last time. So the computer says write complete. And we're going to wait for this to boot up. Someone asked in, uh, I saw someone ask in a Facebook chat one time, does this welcome booting screen, is this normal? And the answer is yes, it is. That is normal. Now, you can see channel 1 is a different color than zone 1. So the next step, step number 4, we're going to come over here, go back to the screen, rebooting, the MCU, we're going to, once again, power off the radio, hold down PTT and PF1. Wanted to make sure I got the PF1 down, because in the first step, the second step, actually, the first step is, again, read your code plug. Second step is PF, PTT and PF3 key, which is, it shows a nice diagram here. Third step is to load that. Fourth step is to power on with the PGT and PF1 key. The PF1 key is this key right here on the side. This is PF3, the blue one on the top. PF1, there's two, there's two buttons. Get it in the light here. It's your PTT. And there's two buttons below that. This is PF1, PF2, and PF3, according to the diagram in the CPS. So what we're going to do, power it off again, hold this down, this, and this down, these two right here, power it on, and you get this. Are you sure you want to initialize? Confirm. It says select the green key to confirm, which of course it was there anyway. The fifth step is to set your date and time. After the MCU is Reboot is confirmed. You will have to set the time zone date and time as follows, and it's pretty self-explanatory. So my time zone is GMT minus 6. There we go. So you up and down, changes the GMT, P1, uh, today's date, that's the, uh, okay, that's the day. Let's put the 17th. The month is 9. The year, of course, is 2019. And then confirm, and it goes back like this. There we go. Now everything looks different. 
And then step six is finally... Oh, the timeout's on there. Now we can... Let me, let's go... Step six is to, re, is to shoot the code plug in, back in. Device info. Version, firmware version 1.14. This is just a blank code plug. I had uh, a couple of manually programmed channels in there, but now we're going to just write to the radio. Yes. And it's going to do that. PC write. Copying data to the radio. Booting, please wait. It is a slow boot process for this Anytone radio. Somebody mentioned that a while back. And there we go. So you'll see once again, channel. So that's memory mode. That is um, VFO mode. Zone, VFO B. And you can see that uh, I've got it on single band display right now. But you can see that uh, if the light's showing correct. Well, no, that's right. Those are, there we go. So there, on that view, the channel color and the zone color is different than just being both the same color. So there we go. With the baseband update, as requested in the comments of the video that I posted last week, which I'll post right here. I think I posted it earlier on the stream also. You can find it on a card right there on YouTube. So that is the baseband update after shooting the, the firmware into a radio that came from a previous version of firmware. The 1.14 upgraded from something previous to 1.44. And you can see on that radio, I had 1.09. It was quite old. It was like, because I, I know there was a 1.11 and a 1.13. I don't remember if they did. I don't remember if they went 10, 11, 12, 13, and now it's 1.14 is the newest one. I don't remember. I think they skipped one number in there. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, but regardless of, regardless of that, whatever, um, that is how you do the baseband update after up, actually upgrading the firmware from a previous version. So put your comments below. Who's Once again, have you tried updating the firmware? It, those of you who don't have the Plus model, the Plus model has Bluetooth, and the non-Plus model, the, the original 878, has APRS, but no Bluetooth. So basically the only difference, the internal guts of them are almost the same. I don't know if you can hack the 878 to make it an 878 plus you can hack the 868 to make it an 878 i don't recommend doing that that voids the warranty they will not warranty it <laughs> whoever you bought it hopefully you bought it from a u.s dealer and if so they should have a warranty program set up with any tone but be that as it may however you want to toy around with that is is your call that's your radio so 73 guys Thank you for watching. Any other suggestions, please feel free to put your comments below. Uh, let me know what you think about this radio. Let me know who has the 878 and who has the 878 Plus. It's really weird with that green screen there. i got to watch that. i got to make maybe, maybe make that a little bit wider on the shot there. <laughs> All in good fun. All in good fun. 73, and we catch you guys next time. My hand's cut off. <laughs>